Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and I am really excited about this challenge that I am about to do. I have noticed with myself that I tend to DNF books pretty quickly after I start reading them. I also like to brag that I can read the first page of a book and tell you exactly what I'm going to rate it at the end. I am going to try a little challenge to see if I am accurate in my predictions. I have come across four books, three of which I chose, one of which was randomly chosen by my library, and I am going to rate them before I start reading the book, after the first chapter, at the 50% mark, and at the end of the book. And I am excited to see how my rating changes and if I'm actually good enough at guessing my rating. I need to sit down right now and give you my rating based off of a few small criteria from the beginning. So the three things I'm going to be looking at to do my initial rating are I'm going to look at the cover art and the title of the book, I'm going to be looking at the Goodreads rating, and I'm going to be looking at the Goodreads summary. I will be kind of talking to you about it, but I'll include the Goodreads link that I'm looking at on the screen so you can also see it. Probably should have mentioned that I don't know anything about these books beyond their fantasy. All of these books have the potential to be books that I could possibly DNF but also could possibly love. But let's start with Wake of Vultures. So Wake of Vultures, the cover is a gray feather on top of a white and blue background. It looks really interesting. I always ignore those little notes from other authors or newspapers or magazines saying like, this is the greatest book of the lifetime. I ignore them. They mean nothing. You can get anyone to say anything on the front cover. Title, Wake of Vultures, that excites me. I definitely am interested in any kind of book about birds. And it looks kind of like there's some kind of magical elements in the background of the feather, so that also excites me. I like magic. Next, I'm looking at the rating. So it has 3.9 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. That's pretty good. And it has 4,000 ratings and almost 800 reviews. That's actually kind of low for Goodreads. So that means, or that tells me that this book might actually be lower than that because some people read it and thought it was okay but then didn't recommend it to other people. So now let's look at the paragraph. Okay, so some of the words that stand out to me from this little paragraph that we can see without clicking on the more is that she's a half-breed, she dresses like a boy, I am going to make my first prediction that I will rate this book 3.5 out of 5 stars. I kind of want to lean towards 3 stars. I'm going to be generous to it. So let's move on to the next one, which is The Poppy War. Okay, so the cover excites me. I like smoke. I like that kind of effect. Having a person on your front cover excites me less for some reason. I find when I can see someone, whether or not it's like a photo or an illustration, I'm less likely to be into that book and I don't know why that is. But I like the white, I like the black, and I like the one touch of color. That's very exciting to me. So it has 3.98 out of five stars and that is based off of 3,000 ratings and almost 6,000 reviews. So like I was just saying with the last book, that's a lot. That's something I see that tells me that a lot of people liked it and recommended it to other people who also read it. So there are some words in here that I like and some buzzwords that would kind of deter me from this one. So I like any kind of word like test or challenge or anything like that. Um, some of the words that would deter me are things like didn't believe her, marry her off. That kind of stuff tells me very little about the book and lets me know that the major conflict is going to be something that I probably won't care so much about because when I see the word challenge or test, I want that to be the major conflict. The word criminal enterprise, that like really gets me excited. And from the title itself, the word war, I know can be good or bad, so I'm hesitant about the word war. I know that this wasn't going to be a factor, but I'm really quickly going to comment on Readers Also Enjoyed. Out of the three books that I can see, there's two that I absolutely loved but DNF'd because I wasn't 
I wasn't enjoying the audiobook and I'm waiting to get the physical forms to read them. And then there's one that I absolutely loved and I just can't stop thinking about it. Actually going to rate it a 3.5 star. The next one is going to be The Starless Sea. Wow, okay. I know that I'm going to be doing this second, but I'd like to quickly point out that this has the same exact rating as the one before, 3.9 out of, 3.98 out of five stars. I don't know what's up with that. The cover is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I think this is how all covers should look. You got some elements from the book. You got some graphical stuff. You got the text right there in the front. I love it. Now, I am dumb because I mixed up two authors and I thought that this was Leilani what is her name? I can't remember her last name, but her first name is Leani and she wrote Strange the Dreamer, which I enjoyed. I didn't like her other series, but I really enjoyed Strange the Dreamer. So I thought this is who wrote this. And then down at the very bottom of this book, it says author of the Night Circus, which was a book I hated. I could not stand it. So that might affect my thoughts on it. Okay, so the first paragraph is interesting. Sometimes Goodreads will do this where the first paragraph is actually more about the world than the plot of the book. I, from this, can't even see any part of the plot, so I'm just gonna have to make my prediction based off of the world building that I'm seeing here. So I love the idea of a labyrinth. That's really exciting. Filled with stories, that really excites me too. I Nothing else in here really stands out to me. Anyways, I'd like to add a little caveat to the end of this guessing game before I give you my prediction because this does affect it. I've seen some booktube reviews online of this book and I know some people love it, I know some people don't love it, and I understand why they don't. Basically, all I've learned from them is that this book is full of shorter stories that affect the main story. And while I'm not a fan of short stories, I think that this one will do it in such a way that I will really, really enjoy it. I'm going to say that just based off of all the information I've seen, I'm going to rate this book four out of five stars. I think if I get my guess within 0.5, then I should get some kind of award. My award will be that I know I can DNF books as soon as I want to. This is The Throne of the Five Winds. I have read all of this summary before because I read full summaries before I buy books, so I'm including the full summary for you guys as well on the screen. So The Throne of the Five Winds, the cover is gorgeous. I love that bright blue. I love that there's like flowers. I'm going to be looking at it here instead of my screen. I love that there's flowers. I love that there's a dagger. I love the feel of the book. It's got that like like mass market paperback feel and I don't know that just like makes me happy. Um, I also really like the warm grays around the soldiers and even though there's like people on this front cover you can't see them. They're silhouetted. They're dark. There's a lot of them so it's supposed to represent war and like this mass group of people fighting. Also, at the top, they have a little blurb. I forget what you call it, like a motto or something like that. Anyways, not all empires are won on the battlefield. That excites me because now I know I'm not super into really long war books. Like, I find them to be a bit dry sometimes. Sometimes they're done amazing. But this excites me because I know that there's going to be some kind of conflict and fighting and battling, but it's not going to be in the sense of, like, a war. The rating is 3.95 out of 5 stars. That's rather low, honestly. And from what I can see, there are less than 200 ratings and less than 60 reviews. So let me check really quickly when this book was released because that will affect... It was released in 2019 by Orbit. So I think that the fact that it has very few ratings and reviews is simply because it's so new and Orbit didn't do a good enough job of marketing it because Orbit is a huge huge publishing firm. I trust them to publish books I like. Okay, so really quickly, I love that they use the word ambitious in the first sentence. I don't know why, that that's just one of my buzzwords. And the word hostage, we've got this idea that there's going to be two women as the leads and one of them is going to be protecting the other one and the other one is going to have to be forced into a marriage that she doesn't like. All of those are like, yes, I like that. And then after that, though, we see that the emperor is aging. I don't know if that's the person that the girl is going to be marrying or not, 
but it sounds like he's gonna die and that these two girls are stuck in this court and they're part of this deadly game. They use the word pawn, which lets me know that like there's going to be lots of masterminding and competition. So I love that. And it sounds like there's going to be this scheme for someone to rule the throne. I love all of those words. I am going to guess that I will rate this book 4.5 out of 5 stars. I will check back in with you guys and do some reading vlogs for whichever book I get to first. Okay, so I have officially read the first chapter of Wake of Vultures and um, I have no interest in this book. First off, didn't realize that it was going to be like a Wild West story. It's talking a lot about wild horses and growing up on a farm and a ranch and just spurs and guns and all that kind of stuff, which is something that I don't enjoy, that type of fantasy setting. I just, I'm not a huge fan of it. So I ended up actually skimming chapter one and even that was kind of hard for me to do. I just felt like I didn't care about the main character. I didn't care about anything that was going on with her. And I didn't care about the world that she was in, which are, you know, the three kind of things that draw you into a story. Unfortunately, I'm gonna DNF this book. I know that like part of the reason why I was doing this video was to like finish books like these to see if they actually hold up in the end and see if I actually should finish them but I'm not going to like force myself to struggle through a book where from page one I realized I wasn't enjoying it. What this tells me so far is it's been about a week since I wrote down my review, so I just quickly glanced at the one for Wake of Vultures, and I predicted that it would be a 3, 3.5. Believe that this is telling me that I need to stick with my gut, that like, if I'm looking at a book from the beginning and thinking that it's gonna be pretty low rating for me, that it is gonna be a pretty low rating for me. But I mean, I was still wrong with my rating, so maybe I should in fact, instead of just going off of the Goodreads front page and my own opinions of a book, I should base those opinions on the first chapter of a book instead. So maybe what this challenge is going to teach me is instead of borrowing books from the library or buying books is I should go on Amazon and read samples before I even bother checking them out. That would be an interesting thing to learn and to put into practice. I just finished the first chapter for The Poppy War. I really, really enjoyed chapter one. I think I'm going to raise my guess to a four out of five stars for this book. Hi, okay, so I'm at 45% through with The Poppy War. I'm gonna stop and take my guess right now instead of going on to 50% and stopping then because I think I'm about to go on a walk and I think I'm going to marathon the book. Anyways, I think I am still going to be rating this book four out of five stars. I don't want to say anything about why I'm going to be possibly still rating it that way, but um, I'm enjoying it still. I also do have a feeling that the book could go up or down, so that's still really exciting to see. Yeah, I'm going to save any kind of talking until I finish the book. Welcome to my car. And I finished the Poppy Wars today while I was at work. I'm about to drive home. So I thought I would update you guys really quickly on the conclusion of that book. I was wrong. I was wrong about this one. I ended up rating it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. There was very, very little wrong with this book. I wouldn't even say that it losing 0.25 stars was because anything was wrong. It was simply because... I felt like there were a few things that could have been done better. Like they weren't necessarily bad, they just could have been enhanced a little bit more. I absolutely loved all of the themes of the book, the use of drugs and what it symbolized to the people, the idea that war is bad, bad for everyone. Who it really is bad for is the civilians. They are affected the worst. I love the idea that our enemies are just the same as us and they are just people on the other side of a fight. I loved the idea that our heroes sometimes let us down and our enemies sometimes end up being the greatest people in our lives. There were just so, so many themes that I fell in love with this with this book. And I, I, I know I'm missing some of them, but those were the ones that really, really stood out to me as just 
exceptional. I think this would have flourished as a standalone epic fantasy. I think instead of turning this into a series, and I can't say for sure because I haven't read any of the later books, I believe that two is out and three is about to come out. Instead of written this as a series of books, if she had written it as a 1000 page standalone, I would have rated this five stars. I just think that a lot of the themes were so strong and brought throughout the book and it just left such an impact that I think she could have added maybe another 50 pages to the beginning to help strengthen this idea of magic that is really strong in the later parts and then use 350 pages to write the wrap-up conclusion where we're left at the cliffhanger. I think that would have made me absolutely ecstatic. It was so good, so dark, definitely not for children. It had so many dark elements and themes, which I'm a fan of, so doesn't hurt. I'm gonna stop gushing about this book because it's time for me to drive home and today I'm doing my week one for March wrap-up so I'll be talking about the book there too. Hi, so I just listened to the first chapter of The Starless Sea and oh my god, it's, it's so good. It's absolutely amazing. I don't remember what I predicted this book to be but I, after chapter one, am going to predict it to be a 4.5 star. read. Um, I really think it has a chance of being a five-star read, but I don't want to give it that because I do think that it has a really good chance of being a four-star read as well. So I'm going to split the difference. It's not at all what I thought it was going to be, which I understand from what I've heard about this book is that's why a lot of people have rated it less. And for me, that is usually a reason why I would rate a book less. But in this one instance, it seems like it's going to be more about storytelling than an actual story. And I'm really intrigued. I really, really like the narrator's voice and the writing style is going well too. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the 50% prediction for The Starless Sea. I think I'm going to be rating this book five out of five stars. I really don't see how this book could lessen at this point. I mean, I'm only 50%, so there's still a lot of books to go, but it is absolutely so, so phenomenal. So I f finished The Starless Sea, and oh my god, it was a five out of five star read. Honestly, if I could rate it six out of five stars, I would. I feel like this book broke my five point rating scale that I've kind of developed over the years. You know, as you go, you figure out kind of where books belong. And this one was so good. It just, it destroyed my idea of what a five star book actually is. Hopefully that won't ruin all other books for me. I remember when I was guessing my rating for this book, I like kind of gave it a pity guess. I know I don't really mention that, but I was really looking at it and I guessed, I believe it was 4.5. In the back of my head, I was really thinking something along the lines of, well, I need to rate something higher because so far I've rated everything or I've guessed everything would be rated 3.5 out of five stars. And that's what I wanted to give this one's guess as well and so I kind of went up just out of pity points but no this was phenomenal phenomenal I wouldn't recommend this book to everyone but I've recommended it to a few people since I finished it which I finished it about an hour ago uh, really quickly I guess I'll just talk about the book and then I'll be moving on to the last one in this video it was really good so the book is actually about a boy named Zachary and he finds a book in a library. He's not a librarian like I thought, but he finds a book in a library and when he opens it up it is the story of his life. And it has nothing to do with whether or not he chooses to read it. He reads the whole thing right off the bat. The story isn't necessarily only about him. There's parts of the story that are obviously about him even though it doesn't reference him by name. And then there are like fables and fairy tales and other such stories along with it and he gets drawn into this underground society where he kind of learns about magic, but not like 
Harry Potter wizard magic, but like the fact that it'll snow when it's not even supposed to on the Weather Channel, you know, that kind of magic. Like when little things happen every day that we brush off. Anyways, he finds out about magic and he is trying to just figure out about this new world that he's come into. Through that, he runs into some great other characters and the real thing that you have to know going into this book is that it's not a novel. Like you're not starting off and you're not following necessarily a plot where Zachary like reads a book and then figures out more about himself and then does things. It's more of a metaphor. Like the entire story is a metaphor for his life and everyone's lives and every character in the book is a metaphor for something that's happening in the fable and the fables are reflected back into the story and the main story is reflected back into the fables and everything is just intertwined and interlocked and it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and I highly highly recommend the audiobook because the there's like six narrators but one of them has like this deep dreamy soothing voice and every single time I was on a walk or even driving unfortunately and listening to it all I wanted to do was just close my eyes and just move forward and listen to his voice explain the story to me but unfortunately I wasn't able just to close my eyes and listen to the audiobook. That book alone might ruin this prediction guessing thing that I'm trying to do here. Okay, okay, okay. Ugh, I hate to do this. I really hate to be the person who does this. I know myself as a reader and I'm gonna do it. Anyways, I read two pages of The Throne of the Five Winds and I'm not in the mood for it right now. So that means I'm going to cancel it for this video. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I'm going to read it one day. I enjoyed it. It's just not what I'm wanting now. And I know that that will affect my reading. And if I try to push myself through with reading this book right now, that I will end up getting into a reading slump. And I really don't want to be faced with that. I'm not going to DNF it. I'm going to put it back on my to be read pile because two pages isn't enough, especially when I do plan on reading it in the future. And in case you're wondering why I might be kind of pausing on this book if you're like wondering if that'll affect you is the writing was very dense and it wasn't going to be a quick and fast read and I was going to have to really focus on every single sentence and every single word and that has its place and it has its time but right now that's not what I'm wanting which means that this video is over. Hi. I have been dreading to upload this video. In fact, it's been months since I actually did the challenge and I haven't done the outro yet because I just keep stalling. I'm not satisfied with how it ended where I ended up hating two books to the point of DNFing them and loving two books to the point of them basically being five stars. I feel like that doesn't tell me anything, which means that all I need to do is do this challenge again. but. I'm hesitant because what if this happens a second time? So instead of sitting and complaining and keeping this video in my queue of videos that need to be edited and uploaded to YouTube, I'm coming to you with this ending saying, I'm gonna do this challenge again sometime in the future, hopefully sometime really soon in the future. I enjoyed doing the video. I just am sorry that it didn't turn out at all like I thought it was going to. I really feel like what frustrates me the most and why I've been stalling on this video is because the results are so inconclusive. So maybe I should try to do this video challenge with more books in the future or maybe I should try to do it with less or maybe I should try to do it with only audiobooks or only physical books or maybe I should allow myself to do just a little bit more research before I started. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know if you'd ever be interested in doing something like this. I'd love to watch someone else trying this type of video or if you've seen someone else already do this type of video, link them down below because I'd love to check it out. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't remember how my outro goes, but until next time, I will talk to you all in the comments. So uh, bye.